Welcome to another video tutorial from the Voyager Robotics Classroom. This video is less for my students and more for people interested in running a similar program at another school. Today, we are going to be learning the basics of how to take a finished 3D model and turn it into a real-life plastic object using the MakerBot Replicator 2. I'm going to try to share as much of my experience as possible without making this video too long. Please request in the comments any other info you'd like to see in future videos. Right now my Replicator 2 gives me successful prints 99% of the time. It took a while for me to get that level of reliability, but once you understand the process and learn to be very careful in a couple of ways, you can get there too. Let's examine my current setup. First and most importantly, the printer should only be used by a very limited number of people directly. On my printer, I'm really the only one starting prints. Doing things this way has allowed me to make hundreds of prints for hundreds of different students each year with very reliable results. It is really necessary to limit access if you want predictable results. The other thing you'll see in my setup is I am printing on a full size sheets of blue painters tape on top of a super flat glass build plate. Mine is not MakerBot branded so it costs one fifth of what MakerBot charges but it works well for me. I used to print directly on the included acrylic build plate and scrape off my prints with a razor blade. But after a few hundred prints, the center of my build plate was wearing down and causing the build surface not to be flat anymore. There are a few tools I recommend having handy next to your printer. I use a painter's palette knife that I got from an artist supply store to remove the print from the blue tape without damaging the tape. Once the tape starts to wear out, it has to be replaced. I have a small pair of diagonal cutters to snip clean ends on the filament when loading and unloading. I have some allen wrenches to disassemble the extruder when I have clogs or jams. I use white lithium grease to lubricate the spools on the back of the machine to allow for easier feeding. I also lubricate the z-axis screw in the back of the machine. As you can see, I've also installed a closet pull in the cabinet over my printer to allow for quicker swapping between colors. It also helps prevent the spools from tangling. The feed tube I'm using here is from the irrigation section at Home Depot. Make sure you use your calipers to get the inner and outer diameters of the one that comes with the MakerBot before you go. The first thing you want to do when setting up the MakerBot is level the build plate. You should only have to do this once in a very great while if you are careful with the MakerBot and don't move the machine. When leveling the build plate, navigate to the Utilities, Level Build Plate, and follow the on-screen instructions. The only thing I can add is that it is helpful to have your piece of paper already there when the nozzle lands at its test point. If the paper won't move, tighten the screw. If it moves freely, you should loosen the screw. Ideally, you'd like the paper to move and be able to feel a little friction. This gap also has to do with your environment. If you have different temperatures and humidity, you may have problems. If your prints won't stick to the build plate during printing, even with a raft, try making this fit tighter. If your nozzle is frequently clogging or your raft and first layers are squished and the raft is hard to remove from the model, consider leaving a little more space between the nozzle and the build plate. This setting is really the most important one that you can have with the Replicator 2. Get it right and you'll have many successful prints. Get it wrong or jostle your printer too frequently and you'll be frustrated with plastic spaghetti. Take your time, get it right, work hard to keep the setting. This is why it pays to limit access to the printer. Next, we'll load and unload the filament. Again, from the main menu, navigate to Utilities, Change Filament. Notice the buttons are really sensitive. Press lightly to avoid multiple presses. To unload the filament, choose Unload and wait for the printer to heat up. Once it's hot, the stepper motor that feeds the filament will start to run in reverse and spit the filament out of the top of the extruder. Carefully and gently help the filament out of the extruder. If you pull too violently, you'll leave filament behind in the extruder that might prevent loading. Snip a clean in on the filament diagonally. Careful not to squish the filament and increase its diameter. Place the filament in through one of the holes built into the spool or otherwise secure the end. If you fail to do this, you will get your spool tangled and never be able to reliably use that spool again.
tangles are a serious problem, so much so that some users will not change a spool until it runs out to prevent tangles. Once you start loading or unloading, the hot end of the extruder will stay hot until you navigate away from this menu. Make sure you either print something right away or use the preheat menu to force a cool. If you leave the hot end at temperature, you'll cook the filament inside until it starts to burn, turn brown, and lose its liquidity. This can cause some nasty clogs and unpleasant smells. To load new filament, make sure there is a clean end by snipping if necessary, and feed the filament through the guide tube. Choose load and follow the instructions. Press the M to see the next page. If you press it too many times, loading will stop. Push the filament straight in until you start to feel the motor helping you. Keep gently pushing for a while until the filament starts coming out. Let the filament extrude until the color has completely changed if changing filament. Press the M until it stops. Remove the extruded filament from the build area. If the printer starts making a horrible clicking noise, press the M until you stop loading. There is a jam somewhere in the extruder. It could be bits of leftover plastic in the mechanism, or it could be the filament hanging up on the hole that leads to the hot end. You can try unloading the filament, snipping a fresh end, and reloading. You can also try to measure the diameter of the filament. If the filament is bigger than 1.8 millimeters, it'll be very difficult to load or use. If your jam is persistent, you will need to disassemble the extruder and clean it out. MakerBot has some good videos for this. Once you are loaded and ready to go, go back to the main menu and choose Build from SD Card to choose the, a prepared file to print. You can also print directly from the computer via a USB connection. Occasionally the SD card will have a glitch that will cause your print to fail. This is pretty rare and it can usually be fixed by just starting the print over. Printing over USB can be dangerous if your computer gets turned off or goes to sleep during the print. This is especially a problem for laptops or computers with scheduled maintenance. I also don't recommend running prints overnight or when you can't check on them. There are all sorts of errors that are relatively easy to fix if you're there to catch them. There are also a few catastrophic things that have been known to happen, like the printer freezing in position with the extruder running the whole roll of filament into the build area and coating the whole inside of the printer in plastic. Listen for the horrible clicking sound for jams and then use the menu to load and unload the filament. Listen for creaking and snapping of plastic on plastic that would indicate a tangled spool. Untangle, reload the filament if necessary, try spooling out filament and rewrapping it. Once the print is complete, carefully separate the print from the painter's tape using the palette knife. Be careful to preserve the tape for as many prints as you can. Each panel is about $10. I hope this video helps you maximize the reliability of your MakerBot Replicator 2. Keep an eye out for other videos about preparing or designing things for the 3D printer.